Good afternoon. Um, this uh, welcome to again this uh, Liz 2010, uh, which is uh, a course in uh, inf organization of information resources, dealing mostly with the cataloging, classification, and information retrieval. Um, last time we were looking at um, uh, what is uh, uh, what are the functions of a library catalog. And this time around, we want to look at uh, the types of uh, library catalogs. Now, library catalogs, in terms of types, we look at it from two angles. The first angle is the physical format in which these catalogs are prepared. The second angle is uh, the arrangement of bibliographical records in that catalog or the, the arrangement of the entries in that catalog. So this particular um, uh, uh, lecture is looking at the physical formats of catalogs. In what physical formats do the catalogs appear? Okay? We have uh, uh, many physical formats in which catalogs appear because catalogs have a long history. Yeah, dating back to those years when uh, information was kept on clay tablets. Okay, we had catalogs, rud uh, rudimentary catalogs uh, or basic catalogs, which were just a listing on maybe a wall uh, or on some clay tablet. You find a listing that looked like an index. But um, uh, with advancement in technology and uh, advancement in the printing industry, we find catalogs uh, being transformed, evolving uh, into more sophisticated catalogs. Starting from book catalogs, going down to computerized catalogs now. Now, uh, I'll briefly look at some of these, uh, the details of, of these um, um, uh, different types of catalogs. The details are found on our, uh, our website when you go to our Moodle lectures. In our platform, you'll find uh, detailed information. So I encourage you to read. Uh, 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 the modules and other lecture materials. But the first of all catalog is a book catalog. Now a book catalog was uh, uh, is one of the earliest catalogs, forms of catalogs. And that uh, catalog was mostly the, the entries uh, or the records of uh, the library materials were kept on sheets of materials which were compiled to make a book, uh, in the form of a book. Uh, now, a book catalog could be written, printed, uh, or it could be handwritten. Now, um, book catalogs were cheap to make uh, or to create. Um, they, were, they were portable, they were easily, you could carry them around. Uh, and, and consult them. Uh, the, the, the users could carry them around and consult them. Um, but the challenge was that uh, uh, these book catalogs were not very easy to update, to make them current, to insert any new materials. They were very difficult. So as a result, they, uh, you have to have supplements, you know, to the book catalogs. And as the collection grew bigger, you needed more and more copies or volu volumes of these book catalogs. So they were surpassed or replaced by sheet uh, catalogs. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, a sheaf catalog. A sheaf catalog is a, a, a set of, uh, uh, of uh, you know, loose sheets uh, or strips of paper where the cat uh, entries, book entries were I mean, the, the, the catalog entries were written and then uh, filed uh, in, in, a, in a form of a, 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 an expandable file. But uh, of course, the advantage was that the, it was easy to remove uh, 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 a, a, an entry and replace it with another entry and so on. Uh, these were easily to update, very easy to uh, to expand, 
but the challenge was that uh, uh, the entries could easily get uh, soiled with the heavy usage and uh, um, they were not very durable. Uh, card catalogs was uh, a major form of catalog which is still in existence even today. In some libraries you still find a card catalog. These are uh, where you find the biographic records or the entries uh, are written on small cards. Yeah. Uh, we have a set a number of them around and then the, these cards are kept in uh, a cabinet, a wooden or metallic card cabinet with with several trays. So um, these cards were easy to replace, easy to um, to uh, to expand, to 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 insert new ones, remove old ones. When you are reading uh, books, uh, old books, you also read the records. So they were very easy to to update uh, for many many years. Uh, I think for over a century, these catalogs have been in existence up to date. They still persist. Uh, the next type of catalogs are microform catalogs. Microform catalogs uh, were, uh, in, came in uh, different uh, varieties. We have microcard, microfish, microfilm, and these were kept on small strips of films. And, but the, the good thing about them was that they were compact. So you could have several entries on a very small film strip, thousands of entries on a small film strip. So they were very compact. The card, it's called post the card catalog, which was bulky and occupied large space. These were compact. The disadvantage was that you needed um, uh, equipment. Uh, you needed also electricity. Uh, and could only be consulted by one reader at a time. Whereas a card catalog could be consulted by many, many uh, readers, as long as they don't consult the same tray. Yeah. Then the, 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 the modern catalog now, which is replacing the card catalog, is uh, the online public access catalog. This is uh, a catalog um, uh, where entries are kept on a computer. Uh, we know that a computer is... Um, uh, as huge space to store thousands uh, or if not millions of bibliographic records. It's compact on just a small uh, hard disk you can keep uh, thousands of records and they can easily be updated so it's uh, very hospitable, you can set in new, you can remove all the material, records of old materials, you can set uh, uh, records of new materials very easily. And the one good thing about online public access catalogs is that uh, um, they have numerous advantages. For example, they can be um, uh, accessed online from anywhere 24-7. Uh, you don't have to be in the library if they're connected to the internet, your what? catalog. And, and so, so it's from... Um online public access, uh, access catalogs that now we have web or packs. Can, kindly uh, speak briefly on web or packs. I, I know it's just a, uh, a shift now. It's, it's a They're shift now website, yeah. that, you know, because uh, a, a computerized catalog can be on a standalone uh, uh, computer, you know, which is not connected to the internet. Uh, it could be also on a, uh, a server which is just connected to a local area network where it is accessible only within a campus or uh, yeah, in a university. Uh, but now the shift is that you want to make it available uh, on the World Wide Web so that your, your users anywhere in the world can access it on the World Wide Web, uh, you know, without necessarily... Uh, so you're expanding its accessibility uh, from a local to a global uh, uh, point of view so that it can be accessed anywhere. Uh, so it beats the barriers of uh, geographical location, uh, barriers of time, uh, you know. Uh, at the same time, this, this one, uh, a web-based catalog, you know, you, you can link um, uh, electronic materials that are not necessarily 
within your library but uh, available on different databases that uh, uh, because the emphasis nowadays now is not necessarily owning the material but providing access to the material so this is I mean uh, it's numerous uh, advantages for, for both the student and uh both the, the users yeah. yeah and the, the librarians mm -hmm. because the users actually can actually search for materials book them uh, online um uh, they can also um, free access for, for open access materials yeah they can also use the catalog itself to to, to have free access to uh, materials that are available online elsewhere uh, you don't need to move out of the catalog to go to google uh, you can search within the catalog materials that are on on Google. Mm. Yeah, I mean on the World Wide Web. You know, you can also um, uh, users can view their own records to know how many materials they owe the library, and when these materials are overdue, and the, the users can also know if they are searching for a particular material, the status of that material. Is it borrowed by someone else? When is it going to be returned? How many copies of a particular title are there? And how many have been borrowed? How many are available? You can need to be only uh, uh, consulted in the library for reference material. So the, 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 the advantages are huge as compared to any other one of the other forms of government. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much, Doug. I, I think one of the exciting things for me in this course is just that, um, you know, it, for students, you know, it opens you up to the world of information, mm. you know, understanding mm. the bibliographic mm. requirements, understanding mm. what you need mm. to include as you create a, a list or an inventory of what mm. the library has. Mm. As a student, you, you know, your mind is opened up to this vast world of information. Mm -hmm. um, but also the excitement of... Um, having to deal with information in a way that um, will help other information users you know i think i, I think that's what makes our, our program very interesting and that's what excites me you know uh, when i walk into the library i'm able to find information easily because i understand these things mm -hmm. but i can also help others you know get mm -hmm. to know that they with uh, with this understanding i'm able to get mm -hmm. access to information and they, they can get access to information mm -hmm. so um, um, that's what excites me. Excites me about about these these things. And you know, uh, thank you, Doc. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm sure students will ask questions, and uh, will be there to answer them. But they are welcome yeah. uh, to ask questions. Um, you are also welcome to comment on uh, on these lectures to see how we can improve them and uh, make learning more enhanced, more effective, uh, and probably find a way of having interactive learning between you and us. So your feedback is very, very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.